for the missing hasn't stopped here in Kentucky. Now we're learning more about the victims, including a baby who's likely the youngest person killed in this disaster. This morning, one of the youngest victims in the deadly tornado outbreak has been identified as a two-month-old girl from Kentucky. I didn't want her to suffer any longer than what she was suffering. It was like I was in the tornado all over again. <laughs> My world got flipped back upside down again. Douglas Kuhn says the ferocious winds sucked him and his family right out of their home. Doctors thought his daughter Oakland had suffered minor injuries, but tests later showed swelling on her brain. And on Monday, the family agreed to take her off life support. I won't miss her crying in the middle of the night, waking me up. I'm gonna miss her, you know, not wanting to be put down. The round of 44 twisters across nine states is now the deadliest tornado outbreak in the U.S. in more than a decade. The death toll in Kentucky rising to at least 74, with more than 100 people still unaccounted for as of late Monday. Like the folks in, in western Kentucky, um, I'm not doing so well today. And I'm not sure how many of us uh, are. But now authorities believe everyone who is working inside this destroyed candle factory in Mayfield has been accounted for. Eight people did not survive when the building took a direct hit, but dozens were initially feared dead in the collapse. This morning, the candle company is denying a report that employees were told they would be fired if they left the factory as the storm approached. Hell, like a war zone. Un, un, um, unimaginable. Homeowner Marty Janes considers himself fortunate. He and his wife were trapped after their house collapsed. Once they made it out, James's wife was rushed to the hospital with two broken legs. The couple now back together. What was that moment like when you finally got to embrace your wife again? Oh, that, I started crying immediately. <laughs> it was just, I don't wish this on anybody ever. Unbelievable. In Illinois, federal investigators are now looking into the collapse of an Amazon warehouse, which killed six people. OSHA, which investigates all workplace deaths, will determine whether safety rules were followed as the storm approached. An Amazon spokesperson says the company will cooperate. Back in Kentucky, these images are lifting spirits. The National Guard recovering a U.S. flag from the rubble of a courthouse. And one man is helping his neighbors by playing a piano that's still standing inside a roofless home. I don't want to face this storm or any other without walking with Christ. And so uh, in those trying times and even in the good times, um, that's where I want to be found. And President Biden will be here in Mayfield tomorrow to survey the disaster zone. Mona? Ike Jachi in Mayfield, Kentucky. Thank you. And incredible stories of survival are emerging. We're now hearing from a worker at the candle factory who found himself buried under tons of rubble. Jim Douglas told our David Muir he could barely breathe with all the twisted steel pressing against his chest. I was at the bottom of the, the pile and all the rubble. I'm guessing it was like 15, maybe 20 feet deep of uh, rubble. So it was, it was uh, cutting off my breathing. I was able to get my arm right like this. It's the only thing I can move. Everything else was pinned so I could kind of push myself up and get a breath. Truly remarkable. Douglas was trapped for four hours. Rescuers had to cut the steel to save his legs before pulling him to safety through a shattered door frame. And turning to the pandemic, the Supreme Court is refusing to block New York's vaccine mandate for health care workers. Meanwhile, as COVID cases surge, California is imposing its indoor mask requirement once again. And people dining inside restaurants in Philadelphia will soon be required to show proof of vaccination. 41 states are now seeing a significant jump in new COVID infections. The average number per day is up more than 40 percent since Thanksgiving. And overseas, in the UK, the Omicron variant is spreading fast. It is expected to become the dominant strain in London by tomorrow. People there are lining up for booster shots. Experts warn Omicron could spread rapidly here in the U.S. as well. So yes, a lot of the cases seem to be mild, but we don't have clear-cut data about how this is going to affect people who are higher risk, those who are unvaccinated, people who haven't gotten a booster or a third shot. Just because cases are mild, I don't think it's something that we sit back and say, big deal, it's coming. We still have to treat the Omicron variant for what it could potentially do to us in 2022. Meanwhile, that Omicron variant has now spread to at least 30 states. All right, time now for a look at your Tuesday weather.
A major storm is dumping heavy snow in the mountains of California into the Rockies, while Southern California gets heavy rain today with possible flash flooding. Farther north, heavy winds may be to blame for a scaffolding collapse in the Bay Area. Three cars were damaged. On the radar, other than the storm in the west, it's expected to be clear across much of the country today. Today's high temperatures mild ahead of that storm system, 65 in Denver today, but chilly in the northwest, 42 in Portland. Coming up, an iconic casino in Las Vegas changes hands. Also ahead, the request made in court by the Michigan school shooting suspect and the judge's response. And later, why today may be the best day to shop online this holiday season. Friday. Shortly after they got one of the two control columns begin to vibrate. Oh, oh. Passengers screaming. Two new planes fall from the sky. Turns out there was a hidden danger on that plane. Yes. She was a force of nature. She could just light up a room. It all smells of jet fuel. To me, it's the smell of death. I wish I could trade places with her. After making changes, the FAA is letting these Boeing planes fly again. 2020, Friday on ABC. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> I you. Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. This is what being live is Three all Rockies. about. This is ABC News Live. All right, we're going to move back. Let's move back. We're surrounded this by people no squeezing into this bomb shelter. We're on an urgent delivery run. With Not afraid to go there. So my question, Mr. President, what are you so afraid of? Breaking news, live events. This is the moment. Lift off. <laughs> Streaming straight to you, anytime, anywhere. You just met one friend right here. You're watching ABC News Live. Thanks for streaming with us. Now with so much on the line, more Americans are turning to David Muir and ABC's World News Tonight than any other program across all of television. All right, pay close attention to the left of the screen there. A truck goes airborne, flying over a wall and onto the street below. No one was inside. Police in Connecticut say the parking brake was not engaged, so the truck just kept rolling. The owner got a ticket. Police say no charges are being filed after this brawl inside a New Jersey casino. Chairs were being used as weapons during a real estate convention in Atlantic City. One person was treated for a minor injury, but they apparently did not press charges. And the iconic Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas is changing hands. MGM is selling it to Hard Rock International for more than a billion dollars. It plans to build a guitar-shaped hotel on the property. The suspect in the Michigan school shooting rampage has appeared in court with a judge ruling on a request made by his lawyer. It comes as the school district once again takes precautions due to safety concerns. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan. This morning, a Michigan school district on edge. Oxford Community Schools canceling classes once again today after receiving what officials called an image from social media that included a specific threat. It comes just two weeks after that mass shooting at the high school. Ethan Robert Crumbly. 15-year-old suspect Ethan Crumbly appearing remotely in court Monday, charged as an adult, accused of murdering four of his classmates and wounding seven others. His attorney asked a judge to move Crumbly from an adult jail to a juvenile facility. This is someone who has never been in trouble before. This is not someone who has a history of assaulting kids his age uh, or any other negative contact with his peers. This this one isolated incident. That request coming after his court appointed guardian claimed that Crumbly is too close to other adult inmates in the jail 
and should be moved due to his age. I'm not being humorous when I say this, but he could still at least be in school. I mean, there are things he is still 15 years of age. Prosecutors objecting. And calling this an isolated incident, quite frankly, does not do it justice. This was a mass murder at a school, Judge. The judge sided with prosecutors and denied Crumley's request to be moved. Meanwhile, his parents, James and Jennifer Crumley, are set to appear in court today. They're charged with involuntary manslaughter for allegedly providing him with the gun. Sadly, today is also the ninth anniversary of the Sandy Hook School Massacre in Connecticut. Advocates gathered yesterday demanding stronger gun laws. Mona, Andrew. Christine, thank you. And coming up, a contest controversy, the event that had teachers racing to scoop up cash for their classroom and the outcry this morning. Also ahead, how many Americans are cutting back on their holiday shopping because of inflation? Tonight, the death toll after the historic tornado outbreak. The search and rescue continues. Plus, tracking the variants as child hospitalizations rise in the U.S. More Americans turn to World News tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on all of television. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. Friday. Shortly after they got one of the two control columns begin to vibrate. Oh, oh. Passengers screaming. Two new planes fall from the sky. Turns out there was a hidden danger on that plane. Yes. She was a force of nature. She could just light up a room. It all smells of jet fuel. To me, it's the smell of death. I wish I could trade places with her. After making changes, the FAA is letting these Boeing planes fly again. 2020, Friday on ABC. World News Now. And America This Morning. The best new video. The breaking news overnight. Emergency crews called to the town of Surfside. U.S. airstrikes hitting targets in Iraq and Syria. The stories people are talking about. If you don't want to shave your legs, don't. I was going to say. Oh, my. Got it. And what to expect in the day ahead. ABC World News Now and America This Morning. Starting at 2 a.m. Eastern. Up all night to keep you up to date. This holiday season, after all we've been through, who couldn't use a little extra joy, smiles, and some incredible free gifts? Yes. That's why GMA is giving back this December. Giving back to you, our GMA family. Every morning, watch GMA. And when you see the QR code, scan it for your chance to win incredible gifts selected by Tori. And even get a $200 gift card, too. This holiday season, GMA gives back to you. Now streaming on ABC News Live, 2020, true crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime, 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. Well, today is National Free Shipping Day, a treat for last-minute holiday shoppers. Hundreds of online retailers are offering free shipping on items that can still be delivered before Christmas. And that includes Target, Walmart, and Macy's. But some stores make you place a minimum order to get that free shipping. And inflation is taking a toll this holiday season. A new poll finds about 40% of Americans have cut back on their holiday shopping because of rising prices. Inflation concerns are also hitting schools across the country that are trying to offer better pay to teachers amid a nationwide shortage. And now a fundraising event held in South Dakota has gone viral. It highlights some of the problems that teachers are facing. This fundraiser at a hockey game in South Dakota is igniting outrage and sparking a conversation about the value we place on teachers. The so-called Dash for Cash event featured a pile of $5,001 bills and pitted teachers against each other, racing to scoop up as much cash as they could for their classroom. I think it was a well-intentioned event, but teachers should never have to grovel for money that's needed for classroom improvements. The hockey team releasing a statement saying, quote, although our intent was to provide a positive and fun experience, we can see how it appears to be degrading. We apologize for any embarrassment. On average, 
teachers are spending $750 out of their own pockets to give their students the supplies they need to learn. Out-of-pocket expenses for classroom supplies are far from the only challenge teachers face these days. They're quitting in droves due to stress from the pandemic, safety concerns, and wages that aren't keeping up with other industries. From September to October alone, 65,000 public education employees left the industry nationwide. In Florida, more than 5,000 teacher jobs were vacant this fall. In Colorado, the need for substitutes is so dire, some districts are calling in parents to lead the classroom. And in San Antonio, Texas, this job fair trying to attract new teachers with signing bonuses of $3,000 and an additional $1,500 for bilingual candidates. I have never had so many principals call me before at the beginning of the school year looking for teachers. That school district has also agreed to pay substitute teachers $225 per day. In sports, a playoff quality battle on Monday night football. The Rams took the lead for good against the Cardinals. With a long touchdown pass early in the second half, they went on to win 30-23. to And new COVID concerns in the NFL with 37 cases reported Monday. Coaches and some staffers are now being required to get booster shots. One other note from the NFL. ESPN reports Las Vegas has been chosen to host the Super Bowl in 2024. Coming up, Hallmark Christmas movies taken to a new extreme. Also ahead, one woman's online adventure, trading small items like pins and earrings until she got a house. Friday. Shortly after takeoff, one of the two control columns begin to vibrate. Oh, oh. Passengers screaming. Planes fall from the sky. Turns out there was a hidden danger on that plane. Yes. She was a force of nature. She could just light up a room. It all smells of jet fuel. To me, it's the smell of death. I wish I could trade places with her. After making changes, the FAA is letting these Boeing planes fly again. 2020, Friday on ABC. Tonight, the death toll after the historic tornado outbreak. The search and rescue continues. Plus, tracking the variants as child hospitalizations rise in the U.S. More Americans turn to world news tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on all of television. The most powerful stories of our time, anytime. Nightline. This is what being live is Please all about. This is ABC News Live. All right, we're going to move back. Let's move back. We're surrounded this by people no squeezing into the bomb shelter. We're on an urgent delivery run. With Not afraid to go there. So my question, Mr. President, what are you so afraid of? Breaking news, live events. This is the moment. Let's go. <laughs> Streaming straight to you anytime, anywhere. You just met one friend right here. You're watching ABC News Live. Thanks for streaming with us. This holiday season, after all we've been through, who couldn't use a little extra joy, smiles, and some incredible free gifts? Yes. That's why GMA is giving back this December. Giving back to you, our GMA family. Every morning, watch GMA, and when you see the QR code, scan it for your chance to win incredible gifts selected by Tori, and even get a $200 gift card, too. 